Welcome. In the previous episode, we covered Kubernetes network policies. If you haven't watched that episode yet, you can view it by clicking in this notification here. In this video, we will continue our discussion on Kubernetes network policies, and we will explore Calico's network policies that extend Kubernetes built-in policies. Note that when you install Calico Container Network Interface, or CNI, it will also install all the necessary Calico policy components as well. All you need to do is install Calico CTL, uh, which is a CLI, and then I provided the link to where you can install it under the video description. To begin with, let's summarize uh, how the Kubernetes policies um, apply and work. First of all, policies are namespace scope. That is, you create them within the context of a specific namespace, just like, for example, pods. Policies are applied to pods using label selectors. Policy rules can specify the traffic that is allowed to or from other pods, namespaces, or ciders. Policy rules can specify protocols such as CCB, TCP, UDP, SCTP, name ports, or port numbers. A reminder that Kubernetes itself does not actually enforce network policies, and instead it delegates that to enforcement to the network plugins, um, such as Calico. Most network pl plugins implement uh, the mainline elements of Kubernetes network policies, though not all implemented every feature of the specification. So next, we are going to, the rest of this presentation, we are going to look at Calico and how it implements policy and what are the benefits that it brings to the table. Now let's take a look at some of Calico network policy features. Policies can be applied to any kind of endpoint, pods, containers, VMs, and or host uh, interfaces. And that's a, one of the big benefits of Calico is, uh, of using Calico policies is that we can actually secure our, our nodes, our cluster nodes. And that's um, one of the things that we'll feature during the demo. Policy rules support. In actions, we have allow, deny, log, or pass. So again, in Calico built-in, only, it only has allow. It doesn't have anything, anything like deny, loss, or pass, which is really, again, another great benefit. Source assignation match criteria, in addition to what Calico built-in provides, it also provides <coughs> port number, um, ports in the range, and Kubernetes name ports. In terms of protocols, you can select or do a match on TCP, UDP, ICMP, SCTP, UD, UD Light, ICM, <coughs> PV6, Protocol numbers from 1 to 255. Also supports HTTP attributes. If you're using the service, service mesh, uh, Istio, it also integrates with Istio, and we can then uh, include HTTP attributes. I'll cover uh, service mesh in an upcoming episode. RCM attributes, IP or CIDR. Endpoint selectors, using label expressions to select pods, VMs, host interfaces, and or network sets. And the last point, but not least, service account selectors, which is, again, another great benefit of using Calico. And I have a demo how to um, use that and what is the benefit of using <coughs> select, uh, service account selectors. Calico network policy concepts. Endpoints. Calico network policies apply to endpoints. In Kubernetes, each pod is a Calico endpoint. However, as we mentioned before, Calico can support other kinds of endpoints. There are two types of Calico endpoints, workload endpoints, such as Kubernetes pod or OpenStack VM, and host endpoints, an interface or group of interfaces on a host. 
namespace and global network policies. So in Calico, there are two types of policies. One is namespace, which is the scope is similar to uh, built-in Kubernetes policies. And, but also it has global uh, network namespaces, which, which are independent of their, um, namespaces. So again, Calico network policy is a namespace resource that applies to pods, containers, VMs in that uh, namespace. And this is how we define uh, network policy in Calico API version for uh, project calico.org v3. The kind is network policy. And then as usual, we have the metadata such as name and namespace that it applies to. There's also um, Calico Global Network Policy, which is non-namespace resource and can be applied to any kind of endpoints, not just pods, but VMs and host interfaces as well. And again, it's independent of namespaces. And this is how we define them. Again, we have API version, um, projectcalico.org v3 kind global network policy. So this is the kind global network policy. And then we have the uh, metadata as uh, up here. Let's drill into Calico host endpoints. As we just mentioned, there are two types of endpoints in, in, in as far as Calico is concerned. One is workload endpoints. You can think of it as pods. And then there are also host endpoints, and those are the interfaces that are attached to a host. So, and it, before we can apply any policies to the nodes themselves, that is how we protect the nodes, we need to create endpoints that we represent um, those endpoints, which are the Calico cluster nodes. So a host endpoint resource, host endpoint, represents one or more real or virtual interfaces attached to a host that is running Calico. It enforces Calico policy on the traffic <coughs> that is entering or leaving the host default network namespace through those interfaces. A host endpoint with an interface name star represents all of the host real or virtual interface. But we can also specify um, a specific interface on that host. And we'll show, I'll show you uh, when, a little bit later how to do that. Each host end, endpoint may include a set of labels and list of profiles that Calico will use to apply policy to the interface. And this is how we define a host end, endpoint. So again, API version, and this is again, we are part of uh, his pro, uh, project Calico.org v3. The kind is host endpoint. Metadata and the metadata, we can have the name of the, um, the endpoint. In this case, we have cube master dash at zero. So we are dealing with at zero interface for cube master. That's kind of descriptive name of, that I gave it to this interface. And we can also label that. And we labeled in this one, I call it Kubernetes host and the value is ingress. Um, and the spec, the interface name is at zero. So which interface are we talking about here? And this is at zero. So again, if you want to apply to all interfaces, then you specify a star. But in this case, we are selective. We are going to apply it only to at zero, which is the default interface on one of my servers. This is a node name. And this is the my master server name is. So you need to specify whatever your master server name is. You specify over here under node. And expected IPs, in this case, only have one IP, and that is 10.00.157. So that's the expected IP, which is attached to at zero. So now that we kind of understand a little bit about Calico network policies, let's uh, begin our demos. And for demos, we'll be using the same setup that we used for previous course, which was on Kubernetes built-in network policies. And that is, we create a couple of name uh, namespaces, one for prod and one for stage, which is basically simulating a production environment and a pre-prod or a stage 
uh, testing our application before going to prod. And then we will deploy a set of very simple uh, Hello World application um, representing the UI business and database. We also create services which are represented by this cluster IPs. And we do the same thing over here uh, on the stage environment. So the first thing that we want to showcase is um, the deny um, policy, which doesn't exist in Kubernetes built in policies. and kind of showcase that very simple um, demo. And then we also allow, show you how to log. <coughs> and there's another benefit of using Calico um, is you can also log um, the um, either success or failure um, connections. And may, you may be using that maybe needing for um, doing audits. Although this is not very comprehensive, just gonna give you a, a heads up. If you wanna use um, very comprehensive uh, logs, then you, use, you should use uh, Calico Cloud, which is not free. So for free, Part the open source part, you can log stuff, but it's not as comprehensive as the cloud. By the way, I forgot to mention that at the beginning, I don't work for Calico. I don't have any relationship with them. They're not sponsoring me in any ways. I've just happened to use the products for a while now, and I happen to like them. Okay, once we apply that rule, then it will create kind of a, a firewall um, that then um, for this policy, we will not allow the UI to directly uh, access DB. So again, this is a very simple um, uh, policy demo to get started with Calico um, policies. We are in Visual Studio Code to run our first demo. And the first thing that we need to do is set up our environment on line 403. I've created a function called setup environment, and I went through that uh, what it does in the previous demo. I'm not going to go through this. So basically, it's going to set up a couple of namespaces and deploy a number of pods to represent the UI business tier and DB and the stuff that I just showed you in the previous uh, slide. And by the way, I'll provide the script for you so you can recreate this. But by the way, this is very simple and I've gone through that before. Um, so I just run that and then now we have our environment created. And um, as part of that, it also creates a, a number of variables. For instance, the UI pod name for uh, the, our pod name representing the UI, uh, the business, same thing, for instance, for business cluster IP, DB cluster IP, and other pods. So this is, they come handy. Um, they are all defined in that function. So. The first thing that we want to see on line 406 is if there are any um, uh, policies have defined for this namespace. So the command is calico ctl get network policy minus n, which is the namespace. And the namespace, our namespace, in this case, a products dash pro. So let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, there's nothing created yet. So let's continue on. On line 408, we want to see if we can um, hit the business um, cluster IP or business service from the UI, from the UI pod. So the command is kubectl exec minus IT. This is the name. It has a name of our UI pod, pod name. And then minus N, that's the namespace and the product. And then this is the command that we are going to run. Basically, we're going to call this web service through wget. So that is the, the command. And then I give it a timeout of two seconds. So after two seconds, if it can't reach, it will um, timeout. So let's go ahead and run that. And right now, because there is no policy preventing it, the answer is yes, we can hit that. Same thing, um, can we hit the DB um, pod from UI pod? on line 409, so let's go ahead and do that. And again, right now there is no policy preventing that. So the answer is yes, we can. So let's just go ahead and clear that. Now let's go ahead and declare or create a policy that will prevent UI pod to directly hit the um, 
DB uh, from UI to DB directly. So and that is on four, uh, line four, um, 412. And this is the YAML file for the policy. Let's go ahead and go through that. So again, we specify like any other um, YAML file for um, Kubernetes, we specify first the API version, and that is uh, projectcalico.org slash v3. So again, just make sure to specify Calico. This is not um, Kubernetes on policy. This is Project Calico. On line two, the kind is network policy. So that's the type of um, object we want to create. And under metadata, we have the name. So we, this is the name of our policy. I call it CAL, uh, stands for Calico, dash deny, dash ingress, dash from UI. So basically it's a, a deny access from UI into um, the, this object that you're creating or the policy that you're creating. And the namespace that it applies to is products dash prod and their spec. Uh, select there. So this is basically what policy um, to, to which object or to which pod this policy applies. And the selector for that is products-db. So any pod that has this label, this uh, policy will apply to it. And the types, we have ingress and egress. Although we, we don't define, we won't define any egress here. But uh, we can if we, um, if we need to. So that's kind of put here for um, mostly documentation purposes. And you know that you can have both ingress and egress in a, a, a policy. And their ingress, so we define our ingress um, action. So this is the action. This is something that was missing in the um, Calico on policy. There was no action. There was only one um, which was uh, approve or allow, but now we have um, an action called log. So we can log any communication that is coming from this um, pod. So basically you're saying any communication, any any time that this pod tries to hit our pod, which is products.db, then log it. And the protocol is TCP. We also have an action called deny. Again, the protocol is TCP, and again, the source is this. So any pod which has this uh, label app equal to um, products-ui, we want to log that for our security purposes to see how many times this is happening, and also we want to deny that. So let's go back to our code, and let's go ahead and run it. So kubectl apply minus f, so like, like any other object that you create in Kubernetes, this apply dash f and then and the name of the uh, YAML file. Now line 414, now let's go ahead and now run the Calico CTL get network policy and see if you have anything right now. And we just created this policy, so now it shows that we have one policy. Okay. Now on line 416, let's go ahead and do those, those tests again. So on line 416, let's see if we can hit uh, the business U, um, tier from um, um, UI tier. Let's go ahead and run that 416. And the answer is yes, because we, we haven't defined any policy that prevents this action. However, the next line, can we hit the DB uh, tier or service from our UI? Let's go ahead and try that. And now you see that this is timing out um, because this is not allowed. So this is, uh, we'll see our um, policy in action. Now let's, uh, ne next section, we want to investigate the log and see um, what uh, log shows um, what we just did. So line 421, first we want to see where um, the, the da database um, Pod is because that's where a log is happening. So, uh, uh, sorry, on what node this pod is hosted, so we can take a look at the logs um, on that server. By the way, the um, the logs when Calico logs these, it, they're actually written into syslog. So, line four twenty one. Let's go ahead and find out where. 
the pods are and, and the DB is here. So this is our DB uh, pod and it is running on node two. So on node two, we can then go ahead and let's copy this and look at the, the log and see if we can find any evidence of that. So let's go ahead and copy that. So the command is grep, and this is the, the phrase you're looking for. So all the Calico um, logs are like this Calico dash packet. And then we are looking inside this log. Let's go ahead and run that. And you see a bunch of them, and this is the latest one. So this is basically said, this is what's happening. Um, um, it basically says cube two, so this is the server name in, and then in this is uh, Calico, and this is the, the kind of the GUID. This is the name of the web or virtual internet um, interface. So it, it's coming from this internet and uh, from this um, uh, virtual ethernet, and is going to this ethernet. So basically, because they're both. Um, installed on the same, if you go back here, and as you can see, the DB and the UI both are on node 2. So, it's not really going outside the node, so it's just basically the traffic is coming from one uh, VET into the other one. So, if you want to take a look at all our VETs, we can verify that on that server. This is the command. Let's go ahead and copy and paste here. So IP link show type VET. So it shows us all the virtual internet pair. So the, if you recall, when Calico creates uh, pods, it creates VET, uh, uh, in a, a pair of VET. One is installed on the, uh, on the pod itself, and that becomes the interface of the pod, and there's another Pair, or the other part of the pet that is installed on the server. And that's how the communication between server and the pod is happening. So th these are the ones that are installed on the, on the server, not on the pod itself. So this one was 0BC02D. So this is, this is the one. And so this is coming um, from, in, from this guy, from this, uh, or two, it's going into uh, zero e two, so zero e two, which is this guy. So again, the the call is coming from one pod is coming from the pod itself goes through this um, vet on the um, on the server, and then enters this vet again on the server, and then it travels into the pod. So that was the or was destination what was supposed to go. Obviously, this was denied, but that was the intent of what it wanted to uh, travel to. So the, it gives you a little bit of information if you're looking for you know, violation. Again, this is not complete, but it actually at least gives you some um, idea of like, how many times this uh, pause, the UI pod is trying, uh, trying to um, connect with the uh, database. So this is the first part of our demo. Um, we'll go, I'll explain um, the next demo and we go from there. For our next demo, we again will create uh, two namespaces with this as we did before. One is called um, products-prod and the other one products-stage. And then we deploy basically the same pods the only difference here is, as you can see now, I'm emphasizing on the service accounts. And if you are not familiar with service accounts in Kubernetes, almost all objects that run in, um, most objects that run in Kubernetes, they have a, they are running in, uh, in, as in the context of a service account. If you don't specify a service account, they leverage one which is built in called default in the namespace that they are running. However, for this demo, we have for these two, for these um, two business uh, pods, one in uh, obviously different namespaces, one in, in and the prod and the other one in stage. Uh, we'll be creating a service account for this called SVC products business prod. And for this one, service account, 
uh, SVC products dash business but pilot. So that's how they they're distinguished. So why do we use uh, service account? Because they're more secure than just labels. Anybody can create labels um, for pods, and if you know a hacker get, get access inside the network and get inside, then they have minimal minimal um, access and then actually create um, pods that masquerade uh, uh, other pods. So you don't want that. So service accounts are more secure and they have specific uh, permission that needs to be granted to the user. So not just everyone, anyone can create service accounts. So that makes it um, more secure. For instance, um, so, so let's say the administrator and administrator can create the service account and then hand it over to teams to uh, use them. And that's why we use this in this context. So as far as the policy is concerned, we want to allow ingress traffic to DB, which is this guy here, uh, from pause labeled um, hello world business. So this guy and this guy will have this label, um, which are in products dash prod or products dash state. So in either of these namespaces, we service accounts name either SVC products business prod, which is this guy, or a service account uh, SVC products dash business pilot, which is this guy. And uh, furthermore, and these uh, needs to have uh, labels that are environment equal to prod or environment pilot. So kind of make that a little more complex to make spoofing and, you know, and giving um, the hacker less opportunity to take advantage of our uh, services. Okay, we are in Visual Studio again, and let's go through our next demo. Um, first thing that I want to show you is uh, a service account. What is the default service account that is created in every namespace that you created? So online, 434, kubectl get service account. So this is in, uh, and we are looking inside the, the, the current uh, namespace, which is the default namespace. As you can see, um, there is a service account called default. So every time that you create a namespace, it will also create a default service account for that namespace. And when you deploy your uh, pods, if you don't specify any service account, it will by default run under uh, a default service account. Now to specify where, um, you know, which service account your application or pod is running, when you create your YAML for your deployment, um, so this is the deployment, uh, the YAML deployment um, file. And um, you know, specific, there's nothing really new here except under spec. This is where you specify the service account. So service account will be under spec, service account colon, and the name of the service account that you want your application to be running on. So this is um, when we, once we run the script, um, this will be uh, executed also, this YAML file. And then our business pod in, in, in the uh, product um, namespace will be running under this service account, SVC products dash business dash prod. And similarly, in our stage environment, our business pod will be running under this service account. Okay. Now let's take a look at um, setup underscore environment underscore SVC. So that's basically setting up our environment, which is very similar to what you've seen before. That is creating our namespaces for stage and prod and so on. Um, the only thing that I want to show you here is how we create the namespaces. So there, there's multiple steps that you need to take. Online 463, the first thing that you need to do is um, run this kubectl create service account and the name of service account that you want to assign to it. So in this case, it would be SVC products dash business dot product, the one that I've just uh, looked at it here. And then, then uh, namespace. So this is our namespace bound. So specify what namespace you are creating in. And the next thing that you need to create is the role. Basically, this service icon 
is supposed or it has what rights. So the role defines the rights that this service account will have. So again, um, the command is kubectl create role, and this is the name of the role. You can again name it whatever you want. Um, again, I call it SVC products dash prod dash business dot role, and then verb equal to and the list uh, and the list of verbs or privileges that you want to give it to. In this case, we just want to give it the get and list privilege, and then on what resource you have to define what resource this will be um, allowed to do around those commands and pod. So this service account, once this, everything is completed, will have rights to do get and list um, on this uh, on all the products in this namespace. Again, this is namespace bound. And the last thing that you need to we need to do is to bind the role. Um, to the, the service account that we created. So let's go through the command here. kubectl create role binding. So this is a role, basically binding the role to the service account. It's called role binding. So kubectl create role binding. And this is the name of, again, you can call it whatever you want. To be consistent, I've used, I've used the same thing as above um, for, for the service account and role. Um, I just ended with role binding. And then role equal to service account. So what role we are talking about. So this is the SVC products and dash role. So that the, the role we just created up here. And then we have to say service account equal to. Um, and then this is the namespace. What namespace this is in. And this is SVC. So the name of the service accounts. So this is how you bind a role to a service account. And last thing that we want to do for this um, policy is um, to create a, um, a, buy, uh, to, sorry, a label for, for this uh, object we just created. So uh, kubectl labels the service account. We want to label that because that's what one of our requirements. We want to have this um, label um, as, as part of the policy. And then for stage, we do the exact same thing. Um, we create another um, service account, and then we um, define a role and bind it. So uh, once we run that, um, then this will have will be executed, and this um, pods will have that service account assigned to them. So let's go back up, and let's run. The whole thing to set up our environment. So that's just going to create the service account, the namespaces, deploy the application, and so on, as we've seen before. Now let's go ahead and take a look at service account that now we have inside um, each one of those namespaces. So online 439, let me just go ahead and clear this. kubectl get service account uh, and the name of our namespace, which is products dash product. Let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, it's got two. This is the one we just created, and this one, um, by default, again, is created if you don't um, specify any um, service account as part of, part of your deployment. This is, would be assumed. However, in our, in our case, we specify for two of our pods. This is the service account that we'll be using. Again, same thing for stage. Uh, sorry, one on each namespace, so this pilot and this business prod. So this the, the the business pods in each one of these namespaces we're running under a specific uh, namespace. So on line 442, um, we want to uh, basically run some exam, um, some tests to see if there any policy actually in place right now. So on line 442, kubectl exec minus it. And this is our name of our pod UI. We want to see if we can hit the uh, database um, service directly. And since there's no policy in place yet, yes, we can. And we see if we can from business hitting the um, DB direct, um, and we run that. And again, I'll be able to because again, there's no policy. And finally, from our stage business pod, can we hit the DB? Uh, business um, pod in, in the prod environment? And the answer is still yes, because we haven't 
specify any um, policy. Now let's go ahead and define a policy on uh, line 448. It's kind of um, restrict access to the um, database. So let's go ahead and take a look at this um, um, policy here. So again, um, we specify the version and the kind, which is uh, the policy. Again, metadata, nothing really different here. Um, again, we have to specify a namespace, so we are concerned about the, the products that that's prod namespace. And then the, under selector, what pod this will be applied to, and any pod that has this um, uh, label will be applied to that. And again, anger, um, we are um, in this case, we are only concerned about ingress. Um, so the action under ingress, we have allow. The protocol is TCP. Now under source, we have a number of um, criteria. First of all, the namespace selector. Um, and this is something that is really uh, great in Calico uh, because it can have really sophisticated searches. So for instance, this one. So let's go through that. The name selector basically what um, namespace we are looking at, anything. So this basically says any name, any uh, so that any namespace that is name is inside this array. So we can have an array of namespaces and say if is a, in any of this. So either in prod, products dash prod or pro, products dash stage. So any namespace that um, um, has these labels, then um, we are um, be concerned that. So that that's our criteria number one. The app selector. Basically, we want to say which pods within that namespaces or namespace we apply to. Uh, hello, business world. Um, so this is uh, the label for our pod. And under service icon, we want to make sure that um, either has this SVC products dash prod or SVC dash prod and the pilot. So we have multiple layer of you know testing that makes it more secure. And the last one is um, we also want to make sure that this has the namespace, uh, the service account, sorry, has either a pilot or prod label. So as you can see, this has become very um, complex or sophisticated, and that provides you know, greater security for us. And under ports, we um, port AD80. So that would be the, the port that we um, basically are concerned about. So the whole thing basically says that we, we are restricting access to our um, business uh, or to our database tier in production. Um, the only, it has to be either in prod or stage namespace. And it has to have um, this either, either of these product uh, service accounts. And uh, a source of those service accounts needs to have a, a one of these labels. So let's go ahead and apply that. And as you can see, successfully applied. Now let's go ahead and run the same test again. So basically here, can we hit um, from pod, from the UI, can we call the database directly? Let's go ahead and try that. And this time, as you can see, now it times out because now we apply a policy that does not allow that. Okay, next, can we do the same thing from business? Can the business um, pod call the database? Let's do, go ahead and do that. Yes, it can because the policy did not change that. And the last test is, can we, from the stage business pod, can we hit the production um, DB. Let's go ahead and see. And the answer is yes, because we uh, explicitly specify that that is allowed. So this is um, kind of more a uh, complex uh, scenario um, for our network policy. As you can see, uh, Calico is very flexible. It, it's you know really great for defining very complex set of rules. Next, we will pay our attention to securing our uh, nodes, um, actually, and we will be talking about the global uh, policies. In the final demo, we are going to lock down uh, 
access to our cluster because right now, as you can see, we have a master and a couple of worker nodes. The master hosts the control plane and worker nodes, they host our applications. And as of right now, there is no restriction. So you can see the green means all the ingress and egress um, traffic is allowed into our cluster, which is not a good thing. For instance, we have this Python service, which is running and provides utility functions for our servers, however, is exposed. And we, we don't want to, we want to uh, lock down access to these and other services that might be running internally. So the first thing that we want to do is lock down ingress and egress uh, completely by creating endpoint hosts for our interfaces on each one of those servers. And once we do that, again, it locks down the access both ingress and egress with the exception of fail-safe ports that we talked earlier. So when we run that, Calico creates virtual firewalls for our servers by programming our IP tables. So the only thing which will be allowed is fail-safe ports, that is uh, the essential services and the ports that provide essential services. For instance, being able to SSH into the server and run command and also having access to the API server so the client can call into that. Other than that, everything else will be locked down. And then gradually we will allow access. The first thing that we want to do afterwards is give ingress access, that is traffic coming into the servers from other servers, not from the outside world, but just from these server. And then after that, we want to also give egress access, that is traffic going out of these servers because um, they, they, they need to talk to each other and to the, uh, to the outside world. So they should be allowed to do that, going outside into the LAN and outside world. And finally, we have the service um, for application. We want to expose this node port, which is 30,007, because we want the client be able to consume our service. And that's what we, when we do that, then we open a port that will allow, because this node port client can call to any of those um, servers and then the traffic will route it to appropriate uh, UI pod here. So that's the plan. And next we go to Visual Studio and we'll implement those. So we are back in Visual Studio Code to implement our plan. On line 462, before getting into <coughs> executing our plan, I want to show you a couple of things here. First, um, on line 462, cube, um, CT, uh, or Calico CTL, get nodes. So this is when you install Calico, your cluster nodes, they also become part of Calico nodes. So when you run that, you see that those are also uh, become the part of the Calico nodes. Okay, and then on line 465, uh, we want to check to see if there are any host points already defined for our server. So let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, there's nothing right now defined. On line 468, so this is our uh, Python service that we, is running on the master. So let's see if we um, can access, um, access that from outside the cluster. So I'm going to run this on uh, Ubuntu VM, which is not part of the cluster. So I'm going to run that. And because there's no policy, um, installed, so you'll see that uh, also a client can access that, which is not a good thing. Okay, now we're going to fix that. So on line 472, 473, and 474, we're going to run this YAML file, which basically uh, creates uh, the host endpoints for our um, servers. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one of them, the first one. So this one, um, the, the kind would be host endpoint. And then we select the name. Uh, I, I suggest, you know, coming up with a naming convention that conveys what the policy or this endpoint is. So in this case, I'm saying it's called cube-master, which is the name of my master server, dash at zero. So that would be the, uh, the default um, interface uh, um, inter uh, or the uh, network interface, which is at zero. So I'm going to apply this to at zero on my server. So I'm going to create a label for this called Kubernetes-host, and I'm going to use that later on uh, once we 
get to the policy and apply the policies. And then under specs, we have inner, we have to specify the interface name, um, which is at zero, and that would be the, the, which interface we are going to apply this it has to be match exactly the, uh, the the interface that you are applying to. And the node name um, again has to be it has to match exactly to the node that this interface is part of that. And then under expected IPs, that would be the IP address which is associated with that interface. So we do the same thing for node one and node two also. So that would be, that would complete our um, endpoints for our classes. So go ahead and run those. So now we'll see that those um, end, uh, host endpoints have been created. So let's go ahead and run this again to see if I kind of verify that Cube's, uh, our Calico CTL get uh, host endpoints. Now this time we'll see, we'll get the results. So these are the name of the servers that are part of that have and uh, that have host endpoints associated with them. If you want to get more information for any of those, we can run this command on line 477. Um, Calico get host endpoint and the name of the header, um, the host endpoint that we are interested in, for instance, the first one here, uh, OYAML. So, and then when we run that, we get some more information about that host endpoint, for instance, the node name, the interface, and IPs, and so on. Okay, now that we have our cluster locked down, we can do um, some more tests. Um, so we can again run this um, Python service if we run it from the server itself. Obviously it's gonna work because there is no restriction internally and we don't want any um, restriction internally anyway for the server. Um, but we, uh, let's say, uh, go ahead and now run um, this again from, um, other servers, so this is again um, Ubuntu VM, which is not part of the cluster. Let's go ahead and run that again command, but this time we'll see that it times out. Even if we run the same thing from one of our nodes, which is part of our cluster, again, that will time out because uh, there's no policy which allow access to it. Um, the other thing that uh, we are not able to do is we are not able to uh, search into any of the, the pods. So if we try this, basically, I'm doing a um, kubectl exec into one of our pods, which this one is the UI part, and run a command, which basically calling a service on a different pod. If we try that, even that will eventually time out because our uh, cluster is really hard down right now. Yeah. But um, even though everything seems to be um, uh, access uh, not allowed to anything, um, however, if you recall, uh, Calico um, creates safe uh, fail rules, and one of them is accessing the uh, API server. So this is the command in order for the clients to access our um, API server. So if we even run this from a machine which is not part of the cluster, this still work because again, this port is part of the safe uh, fail safe port. Okay. Now we want to uh, gradually give access to our server so be able to function. The first thing that we need to do is I give uh, egress access from other nodes to, a, to, to our nodes. So, and that is online for um, 429. This is the YAML file that includes instructions to give um, the policy that will give access um, to our internal um, server. So this is the, uh, the YAML file. So this is a policy. So this is a global policy, network policy. Uh, and then we select the name for it as usual. Um, we can order this. Uh, if you, so this is optional again. Um, if you have multiple policies that you want to be executed uh, in certain order, you can um, order them and those orders will be uh, honored. And then on line seven, there's something called pre dnat equal to true. And the reason for this is when the calls come into a server, 
um, the the solution might be a different uh, or that the the rod the call might be routed to a different destination, and that happens inside IP tables. So we want to implement that before that forwarding and routing happens. Uh, uh, otherwise, it would be useless. So we want to implement that prior to denatting, and that's the, uh, the reason why I mentioned that. And also, we have to also say apply forward through, so just to come, come together. Um, ingress, so that would be our direction coming into a server and action allow. And under source, uh, we specify the ciders that are, that are allowed inside um, a node as part of this policy. So the first one is the pod network. Obviously, we don't want to lock out uh, our pod network. And then this is the loopback. And this, the rest of these are the IP addresses of our node. So it, we want to make sure that they have access to the uh, given access, ingress access to those. And then everything else we want to deny access. Our selector has Kubernetes dash host. So uh, this, um, any server uh, that basically has one of this character or one of these characteristics also should have a label called one of these dash host. And if you recall, uh, we created, we labeled um, all our servers when we created the host endpoints with that um, label. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that. Um, so we can also verify that we still don't have um, access to our node port. That is, an uh, external client be able to call into um, our service we still locked down if we try that you see that it's locked down so we'll fix that later on but just going to show you that that is also locked down now online 498 uh, we are going we want we want to make sure that we give our cluster outbound access that is egress going out otherwise right now everything is uh, locked down and that is the command for it or the the ammo file sorry and again, this would be um, a global network policy. Um, and then the, we can name it, uh, we order it if we, uh, we need to. And then direction would be egress, allow. And again, um, has, must have this selector, uh, has Kubernetes dash host, so it should be part of the label. And as you can uh, you recall again, all our Cluster nodes have this label, so they're allowed um, out. So the, we'll be allowed, be able, allowed to communicate with outside world. So let's go ahead and run that. Now, once we do that, then we'll see that now we'll be able to actually um, SSH into our pod. So this is the one that we uh, tried and it uh, um, timed out. Let's go ahead and try that. And you see that this time it succeeds. We can also do the same thing um, with a different service and still work. So now the uh, egress access has been restored from our cluster. Now let's go ahead and um, see the Python situation. Is the access from both um, a service, uh, I'm sorry, a server which is not part of our cluster and the one which is part. So let's go ahead and run this from a server which is not part of our cluster. So go run that and you can see this is still uh, not allowed. However, we can do that if we go to one of our nodes. Now this is allowed because now we gave them access. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do is we want to give um, the, uh, the UI, um, the node port that and then associate it with our UI um, Pod, we want to give them access because otherwise nobody can call um, our service from outside the cluster. So that is the, um, the, let's take a look at the YAML file. And this is the YAML file. Again, the policy type is global policy. And then, um, and then uh, I'm very, try to be destructive, uh, very, uh, um, the name, uh, when we choose the name, it's going to describe what, what the purpose is. I'm saying it allow node port 30,007. 
And then uh, again, we do the same thing with pre dnat as we mentioned before. Um, order, again, we can order it if we want to. And then action, allow. And then TCP protocol and destination. That is um, where it's going to, or coming into the server, where, what is the final destination. The selector, uh, Kubernetes host. So again, that has to be one of the nodes. And the node, the port which is will be allowed would be uh, port 30,000. And again, um, it should be part of our um, cluster. So let's go ahead and run that. And now if we try now, um, give access, see if we have access from outside the cluster. So we run that now. Now we see you have access now from a machine which is not part of our uh, cluster. And finally, thank you very much for your time and I hope you find this useful. Please check out my other uh, videos as well. Thank you.